The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. We have a special guest today, James Ray from Avid. How's it going? Nice to see you. Why don't you tell us who you are, what you do, and what your company does? I'm James Ray, so I'm the engineering department manager at Avid Technologies out of Twinsburg, Ohio, Go Buckeyes. And we basically are a design service company that takes concepts into full production using our uh, sister companies throughout Avnet and uh, really leverage that relationship, identifying smooth paths to realize the product. And uh, we have a lot of success stories because of that. Cool, so you're the perfect person to help us analyze our hex game and figure out the best way to make it into a viable product. Exactly. We've done a lot of prototypes, but now it's time for the rubber to hit the road. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, so James has been given a prototype sample of the Hex game, and now he's here in the shop to talk about it. All the pros and cons, and then, you know, we're basically gonna discuss what we can do with it. So, yeah, thanks for coming on, James. Sure, it's my pleasure. So you wanted to talk about basically I, how you felt about it and issues you had, so yeah, let's go. I really like the, uh, the concept of it. Um, it was actually a pretty fun game, and mm -hmm. uh, very, so it made, it made sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I liked how uh, you could do decimal and hexadecimal modes. That was, that was kind of neat. Um, yeah, and decimal then, mode is hard. Yeah, it is. It's a lot harder than what you think it would be. The version that I had actually had some of the uh, decimal and code uh, silk screen on the board. So oh, yeah, yeah. I think like these didn't have it. Right. Yeah. Right, which makes it even harder. Because so, you wouldn't even really know which is the um, least or most significant bit on this. Right. It doesn't actually tell you. So I, uh, I thought it was really good. The, the switches kind of gave it a nice tactile feel. Um, I really liked that. The, the sound, the buzzer was good feedback. Um, and it was very simple design that looked really good and it was kind of fun to play with. Mm -hmm. the, uh, well, some of the things that I thought you'd want to be a little careful of are these standoffs that right. they were close to some of the vias uh, yeah. on the version that I had. And then we have that washer on there because the screw head wasn't quite big enough. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, do you think a 3D printed case would be the way to go if this was a small run kit or would there if be? It, if it's a small run, that would probably make sense. But, you know, if you're pushing into the hundreds, then you're probably going to want to come up with something a little bit cheaper and, and quicker to make. Right. Um, and then while you're at it, I mean, why not make it a little bit bigger so that it fits in your hand a little, little better? Bigger, huh? Wow. Yeah, just some kind of little hand finger crevice or something that you can kind of grasp onto easier. Um, that was the one thing that oh, I noticed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it kind of like kind of slides out your hands a little bit. Hmm. So if there's a way to, to do that, that might improve the play. Yeah, I see your point. So like, have like a bump here and yeah, here. Yeah, like right. A kind of, kind little kind ergonomic. Of Adjustment there. Okay. Now that would that would be kind of like a whole other thing we had to think about though. That would be you'd basically be talking about like injection molding mm -hmm. or something. Because like I think even something like this printing it probably took about mm, forty minutes. Yeah, that's quite a long time. Yeah. The, but, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right though. It, the other thing that I think would be kind of cool is if there was some kind of a radio link up to your cell phone or something that you could post your scores. If you had several devices in the area, you could kind of do like a live game. How yeah, would that affect people. the certification? So uh, as long as you picked like a certified radio and didn't adjust anything in the RF path, mm -hmm. it, it would be a minimal impact. Now could we use some, um, actually we have, let me grab something out of the, out of the bin. Okay. We have that, uh, that BBC micro bit, the new one. Are you familiar with that one? Uh, yes. Yeah, we actually did some layout changes to that. Yeah. Well, it's wireless, right? Can we yep. talk, maybe use this yep. as an example? Yep. So this, th this is like wireless Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, right? Yeah. Yep, so a very simple little radio addition to this board, mm -hmm. and now you have some flexibility to uh, kind of grow it. Um, you know, it could even take on different different behaviors of game modes, or, I mean, I'd... Well, you could I'd, use this as a base unit, and you could control other things. Like, you could, instead of using those eight switches as just a hex game, you could kind of use it as a general purpose controller. Yeah, I, I, it, mm -hmm. could, uh, it could grow from there. I mean... Now, is this a UK thing, or is this yeah, all over? Yeah, it's UK. Okay. Yeah, so 
it was a, I think, a government-sponsored project that basically they distributed to all kinds of students over there. Yeah, like, just like the original computer. Yeah. Oh, all right. So you were talking like, you know, okay, so it'd be nice to have some sort of modern wife wireless functionality. Yeah, we're not going to have that so. with an AT Tiny Forty Five. Right. What that is. Yeah. So then we get into the idea where it's like, okay, well, those newer chips are going to be certainly all surface mount and probably like, well, that's this isn't like um, BGA, but it's also it's I wouldn't want to solder that. No, it's it's beyond the casual solder. Yeah. So the idea is, you know, that part isn't like really the kit. Like you'd get a little board that already has that done. Right. And then you could plug that into the kit board. Right. Now, would that get you any shortcuts with certification? Yes, it would. It's so th with, with the radios and so forth, whenever you modify the, the RF path, that's when you need to recertify if the radio module was already certified to begin with. Right. And so you want to kind of minimize that where possible because that's just extra cost. And uh, unless you really need some kind of specific RF performance that you're going after or some unique environment or you want a specific antenna interface, that's where you would want to customize the, the RF path. But for most people, you know, you just need a simple link up and that's where you would just keep it as is as much as you can. All right, so going back to this radio thing, so you think we should have a micro of our choosing and then attach that over serial to a radio to give the device more marketability? Yeah, I think okay. it's, I definitely see it as a plus. I mean, it's so ubiquitous now that if you don't have a radio, they're like, they don't even know how to use it anymore. It's like, oh, you can't hook it up to your cell phone? You, know, you can't do anything with that? I think it's disappointing how many things are going into cell phones. It's like You, you just gotta accept that it's reality now. Though, uh, you know? yeah. I mean, I, the, there was IoT toothbrush that I saw the other day. Why? You know? <laughs> IoT mattress, IoT pillows. Actually, IoT, <laughs> does know? IoT I'm toothbrush like, keep track of like bacteria? Yeah. It, what does it, it does do? something, you know. <laughs> it does something. <laughs> I guess maybe now we should talk about what is the function of it. Like maybe, is this more of like a multi-purpose kit? Could this be like Ben Hex Arduino? And yeah. then this is like, here's Ben Hex Arduino and here's a cool thing to do with it. Like a, an obvious use. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the kit idea is, is really fun. I mean, kids like to put stuff together mm -hmm. and, and make things. And it's definitely the trend now. And uh, so the more you can kind of hook into that market, I mean, I, I think that would make it a lot more uh, Yeah, I think the world's successful. first trillionaire is out there right now, and it's like a five-year-old kid yeah. whose He's, parents are like both engineers. That's right. <laughs> and they like, have like yeah. a bedroom full of Arduinos. Like an IoT diaper or something. I mean, yeah. there's all kinds of ideas out there. Yeah. Right? All right, so you heard it here first. World's first trillionaire is already born <laughs> in the world, and they're playing with their Arduino right now. So what if we, just to explore the ideas, what if we didn't, what if we made our own module so we just certify one thing and then we have a use case right. such as hex game that it plugs into? Yeah. So as far as certification goes for that scenario, mm -hmm. um, you would still have to run it through unintentional radiated. Right. Because it's a product, right? Right. But the, uh, because the, the module's already certified, then that would save The radio save frequency time. part of it would be right. done once, and then you'd have fewer tests to right. do on this. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think something like this um, would be useful for in tech schools, like people learning? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that, it, Felix it makes was it, experimenting with that. Yeah, it makes it really fun. I mean, it's a good way to, you know, get familiar with Hex. Hex is still everywhere. And also... I'm more of an know, octal guy. But you know, really? Yeah. Why? I, it's you know, just I, I like to be on the fringe a little bit. So you the, should get an Altair 8800 then. Yeah. It's all octal. That that would be really cool. So James, you're recommending that if we have something that's already made, use that as the brain to plug into our hex game. Yeah, and what you could really do is keep your hex game standalone. Mm -hmm. And then this would be kind of an add-on feature that would enable wireless connectivity and maybe some other game modes or something to that effect. Okay, and it's an already, basically an already supported product, so people can get up and running with it quickly. Exactly. There's a whole community, and you could also tag into the marketing aspects of the microbit that are already out there, so you might get more exposure. Yeah, what if it like, yeah, like, oh, we need like a piece of paper, like, you could plug into the top, or plug into the back from the top, and then you could have this window so you could have this visible as well, and then maybe mm -hmm. have the, the digits yeah. below it, and then 
Yeah. That could be cool. Yeah. I wonder how hard would it be get, to get that connector? You know, I just I I smell was prototype. <laughs> I was looking it up. There's Any a, excuse, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. And you know, uh, with that with that connector that I was looking at, it's still um, you know human solderable. solderable. Oh right. Oh yeah. yeah. So someone you know a normal human wouldn't want to solder these chips. <laughs> yeah. But if they don't have to, they could solder everything else, which we could keep right. larger as we as we have there. I mean, we could even like remove some of the surface mount on that. Although I think you know you should learn how to surface mount solder. Oh yeah, that looks very good. But maybe passives and larger ICs. So you talked about uh, considerations as far as the placement of this for the yeah. for the antenna? Yeah, so the, the big thing is the antenna, antenna location. Which is right here on this board. Correct. But we have to think of it in relation to the board we're plugging it into. Right, and that's because any metal in proximity to the antenna will detune the antenna make it resonate less optimally. Uh, so that's critical for the antenna to be kind of away from, from metal. Okay. And you can kind of you can kind of test that out, you know, as far as how, how far Any metal away. or just ferrous metals? Uh, any metal. Okay. Yeah. It would it be better if it was facing away from the Yeah, so that, so that wouldn't matter at all. And your skin could affect it as yeah. well. Yeah, and so, you know, you can go in, in the Z-axis away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that can help. Um, but basically, you just don't want to detune. Now, what's on the back here on the opposite side of the antenna? Is that just a... Oh, that's, that's a... That's a keep out. So, right, so there's so, no copper there. Correct. So the copper layers are pulled away from the antenna okay. for this style of antenna. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So it's got a little, little trace there for an antenna and that's, no copper on the back. Yeah, that's essentially just a microstrip antenna mm -hmm. that resonates at a certain frequency. Okay. And so that copper is pulled away from it. And so if that copper was underneath that antenna, now it would resonate not at the 2.4 gigahertz that it's supposed to resonate at. Right. It would resonate somewhere else because so of the extra capacitance. I, the reason I bring it up, so we probably also have to keep in mind, like if this was in the back, we probably wouldn't want much copper or other metal on our circuit board as Correct. well. So we would want to basically keep this as isolated from metal as possible. And also skin? Uh, the skin, also anything that has capacitance will, will introduce uh, a, a shift in the resonant frequency. Mm -hmm. So even mounting screws, that's a common mistake. So as long as you have it far enough away, it, it won't be affected. Let's talk about the pros and cons of incorporating the micro bit. Pro, it's well documented, right. fairly powerful. It has wireless, and that part of it's already been certified, so right. we wouldn't have to recertify that for our project. Lots of software out there, lots mm -hmm. of people using it, name recognition. It's got like an LED matrix on it. It's got two switches, so we wouldn't have to, we could have our select and start taken care of right there. Yeah, and that, that all is really good. One big con, the form factor. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it looks convenient, but I don't know, we're having trouble. So, you know, we've been trying to figure out an orientation to put this, but we run into trouble basically because this connector, the um, coplanar version is uh, through a hole and there is a surface mount vertical version, but we don't want it to be vertical. This solves a lot of problems, but it creates physical layout problems. It's like a, a toss up. Yeah, so I, I mean, does it really solve a problem though? I mean, do we need to have this connected uh, to the internet? Does it need to, uh, leverage the, the name recognition, or can it stand on its own? Well, James, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for helping us out. What are the main takeaways from this project? Well, so we learned that by adding the micro bit that we enable a lot more functionality than we originally had with the design. Right. And so by doing that, we have a lot more applications and we can potentially make this into several, enable different modes of the game, different applications and uh, take advantage of that big user space that the micro bit has. And our control panel and lights could act as a front end to the micro bit as well. Because right. this only has two switches on it, we could give it a lot more functionality. Exactly. And this is a wireless device that's already been certified. Exactly. So we don't have to worry about that aspect of it, but we gain a wireless certified device. We'd still have to certify the board itself, but at least that would be one less step. Correct. So now going forward, could we use Avid as a partner to prepare this to be a product, like to get a quote from? Yes, yeah, so Avid, what, they, what we can do is do a bomb analysis. We can estimate what it would take for the enclosures at a higher volume. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look at the components, see if there's some low-lying fruit that potentially we could uh, 
uh, swap out some components to make a lower cost overall bill yep. material. And then we can also help with the certification process so we can go through and look at the unintentional radiated emissions, make sure that it's compliant to the requirements. Right. And so really, you know, enable this, this concept, this prototype to be taken into a higher volume. And then we could take all of those costs and build them into like a target number, like, you know, $20,000, $30,000 and say, okay, that's our Kickstarter amount. Let's see if we can raise it or just see if that number is within budget for, you know, maybe something built by Element 14. Exactly. But we have all the numbers figured out first and then we pull the trigger. Right. Yep. Cool. Sounds good. Well, I think what we'll probably do in the near future is order another board revision of this that uses the micro bit and then write some code to create our game using the micro bit software. Well, that's all we have for today. What do you think about us using the micro bit along with our hex game? Is it a marriage made in heaven or a marriage made in heck? Let us know in the Element 14 communities at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Oh, oh crap, I forgot. We gotta have eggnog day this week. In a previous episode, we began working on what we called the Raspberry Pi No HDMI project. That was using a Raspberry Pi to directly drive an LCD screen. And we got that part working, but now we need to work on the input. We saved eight GPIO. What are we gonna do with them? You know, it's like a sandwich. You gotta figure out how the sandwich goes together. I can hold Linux in the palm of my hand. Oh wait, I can already do that. <laughs>